Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it's a great privilege and honour to serve the people of Tasmania as their 47th Premier. It is a job of enormous responsibility, one I take with genuine commitment to making the lives of Tasmanians better. Better today, better tomorrow, and better for many, many years to come. Yeah, yeah. Tasmania days were very different to the Tasmania when we first came to government in 2014, Mr Speaker. After nine years under a majority Liberal government, Tasmania is now a growing state with a story to tell, growing in diversity, industry, innovation, attraction and creativity. Mr Speaker, to know where we're going, it's important to reflect on the past and what Tasmania was like under the former Labor Green government. Our economy was in recession, business confidence was destroyed, private investment had withered away, and Tasmanians were buying a one-way ticket out of here. And I'll never forget, Mr Speaker, the conversations I had with Tasmanians during those days. They were dark and challenging times, and under my watch, I will do everything possible to make sure Tasmania never goes back to those days again. Yeah. Our health system under Labor and the Greens was starved of funding, wards were closed, nurses were sacked and beds were locked away. Our education system was leaving young Tasmanians behind and hundreds of social housing stock was sold off just to pay for capital upgrades with maintenance left by the wayside. Mr Speaker, on our side of the House, we understand that you need a strong economy to pay for the essential services, infrastructure and support that Tasmanians need. That's right. Mr Speaker, I'm focused on getting things done. Tasmania has come a long way under this government. Our economy is nation leading. We have the most confident businesses in the country, a record low unemployment rate of 4%, down from 7.4% when we took office, meaning more Tasmanians are in work than ever before. In fact, more than 54,000 jobs have been created since this government came to office and Tasmanians are being rewarded with the highest wages growth in the country over the past year. Our total exports were at record levels of $16, $6 billion to September 2022. Retail spend is up and our plan to market Tasmania as a premium destination is working, with visitor spend a record $3.5 billion for the year ending December 2022. Building approvals remain at elevated levels. Our record-breaking $5.6 billion infrastructure program is turbocharging the economy and creating jobs while delivering better roads and bridges, schools, hospitals and facilities communities need. Yeah. Mr Speaker, to put our investment in perspective, the government's expenditure on roads and bridges alone last year was three times more than was committed in 2013, a year before we formed government. And across government, we are delivering what was promised with 99% of the infrastructure budget delivered last financial year. Mr Speaker, a good performing economy allows us to invest in essential services, and we are. A record $11.2 billion into health, $8.5 billion into education, $1.5 billion into housing, and more than $330 million this year and across the Ford estimates to help Tasmanians with cost of living pressures, including substantial energy relief. The hallmark of this Liberal government has always been strong budget management. <laughs> Our revised estimates report released this month confirms a significant improvement in net operating balance, the fiscal balance and net debt. These results put us in a strong position to weather economic headwinds and allow us to continue to make strategic investments in cost of living relief, health and housing for Tasmanians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, Tasmania is the envy of the world. Yeah, yeah. Our time has come and it is what we do with this time that matters. My focus as Premier is getting things done. Yeah, yeah. To grow our economy, support 20,000 more jobs over five years, take action on cost of living pressures, deliver a world-class health system deliver further education improvements, build the homes that Tasmanians need, keep our communities safe, especially our children, and protect and promote what makes Tasmania so special. <laughs> Mr Speaker, this majority Liberal government has taken our economy from economic laggard to economic leader. There are more people than ever calling Tasmania home.
And in 2014, we set a bold and ambitious target to grow Tasmania's population to, to 650,000 by the year 2050. And we did this because our economy was languishing and population growth, growth was wavering between stagnation and decline. Since we launched the Tasmanian Population Growth Strategy in 2015, focusing on job creation and strengthening our economy, migration and livability, our population has grown to an unprecedented rate and is expected to continue to do so. We want Tasmanians and those who migrate here to have opportunity to have a home, access to a great education, world-class healthcare, skills and training and career pathways. Yeah. Mr Speaker, Tasmania is building its reputation as a global gateway for innovation and commerce. If there's one thing I've heard from business leaders recently, it's Tasmania's time. And it's time to get things done. We have secured our identity in the global economy. It's why, as a majority Liberal government, we will always back our business and industry to innovate, accelerate and to prosper. We've just launched our Small Business Growth Strategy 2026, yeah, yeah, yeah. delivering grants to help small business grow. Our significant boost in exports shows that Tasmania has what the world wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our agri-food sector has grown to $3.52 billion, putting us on track to reach our target of $10 billion by 2050. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Under this government, more farmers than ever before now have access to reliable irrigation water with some 18 schemes now in place. Yeah, yeah. And we are working to progress additional projects, including the Don, Northern Midlands, Sassafras Wesley Vale, Tamer and South East Irrigation Schemes. Yeah. Over the next five years, these projects are estimated to deliver 3,500 jobs, more than $450 million in on-farm investment and over 130,000 megalitres of reliable irrigation water. Mr Speaker, we are growing our blue economy through the responsible use and stewardship of our marine estate, including via our Tasmanian salmon industry plan informed by world-leading practice, science and <laughs> consultation. Yeah. Our shellfish, mar shellfish market access program is supporting the oyster industry. Our building our fisheries policy backs our commercial fishers fishery sector and we are improving access and facilities to support recreational fishers. We are extending the Abalone Invest Industry Reinvestment Fund to provide ongoing and dedicated invasive urchin control and supporting research and activities to underpin our abalone fishery. We are also extending our support of the Rock Lobster Translocation Program to help rebuild stocks of our iconic rock lobster on our east coast. And it is, this, it is this Liberal government which is delivering facility upgrades to enhance trout angler access to our world-class inland waterways. Yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, forestry and mining are the backbone of many of our regional communities. Yeah, yeah. And we are giving the industry the confidence it needs to invest and to grow jobs. We have strengthened our workplace protection laws, yeah. ensuring Tasmanians yeah, yeah. working in our forests are better able to go about their jobs without the threat or intimidation from radical protesters. Forestry exports are up. We're helping the industry to innovate and diversify, and we're working with Sustainable Timber Tasmania to realise the carbon potential of our forests. Mr Speaker, the mining sector accounts for over 60% of our mercantile exports by value supports more than 5,000 jobs and provides tens of millions of dollars in royalties and other fees to Tasmanian taxpayers. We are backing this important industry, having stopped the land lockups, doubled our mineral exploration spend, moved mineral resources Tasmania to burning and providing funding to keep mining at the global forefront of innovation. With the world moving to a renewable energy future, Tasmania is in the box seat to provide many of the key minerals needed to power this transition. Yeah, yeah. It's why, Mr Speaker, we've committed $2 million to a refreshed geoscience initiative on top of an additional $1.5 million for our popular exploration drilling grants initiative. Yeah. Mr Speaker, there is no doubt that our most significant economic, environmental, social and community game changer lies in our globally leading 
renewable energy strategy. Yeah. Tasmanians are proud of their hydro. It's placed us at the forefront of renewable energy development in Australia, but make no mistake, Mr Speaker, we are still facing challenges as we grow as a state. Hydro isn't cheap to maintain, and it doesn't generate all the energy we will need for the future as demand grows. It's why we have a plan to make sure Tasmanians continue to have access to the most clean, affordable and reliable energy in the country. Under our plan, we are developing new renewable energy capacity, which we need to keep downward pressure on prices and ensure our energy system continues to grow with our expanding population and economy. We want to be able to support our existing industries and attract new ones. Through our partnership with the Federal Government on Marinus Link, we now have certainty for the project and a clear pathway to final investment decision in late 2024. Marinus Link provides confidence for our renewable energy proponents, including wind, solar, green hydrogen, looking to invest here in Tasmania. And we will soon be releasing an update to the Renewable Energy Action Plan, powered by Tasmania, focused on accelerating renewable energy developments. Yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, we need to be connected to the national grid so that we play our part in helping Australia and the rest of the world meet its emissions targets and so that we can sell excess energy when we have it and import power if we need it. That's why Marinus is so important. Make no mistake, pulling out of the national network would see power bills soar and make it harder to keep the lights on. We do know, though, that power bills are hurting. That's why we have direct support for the vulnerable and loans for business to make them more energy efficient. We also know households and businesses are facing short-term energy price pressures. That's why we are delivering the most generous electricity concessions of all the states. In addition, we have made available an energy assistance package, a $180 bill buster payment, energy saver loans scheme, hardship relief, and we've made the Aurora Plus available for free. We've also announced the establishment of a loan scheme for commercial and industrial energy users to support investment in energy <coughs> efficiency. And we are building on this support. We've made provision for $33 million towards the National Energy Bill Relief Program, which is close to being finalised through National Cabinet. This package will provide further support to households and small businesses doing it tough. Yeah, yeah. And we're also aware that there are larger commercial and industrial businesses that are being hit hard, coming off non-regulated contracts that are not within the proposed National Relief Package. We will be implementing our own state-based program for this group of businesses through hardship payments of up to $20,000. Furthermore, I have tasked Treasury to look at how we develop a renewable energy dividend payment for all Tasmanians, so that as these significant renewable energy projects come online, all Tasmanians will reap the benefits. <laughs> Mr Speaker, our plan will always ensure Tasmania has amongst the lowest power prices in Australia. A price cap isn't the answer. Those opposite know that. They know it will kill retail competition, drive prices up, make our systems harder and more expensive to maintain and cost $50 million a year to implement. Mr Speaker, Marinus also brings an enhanced <coughs> telecommunication future for Tasmania. Growing our digital technology capability will attract business from across the globe. We all remember the digital disruption to our lives when the cable went down. More than ever, digital capacity is essential to growing Tasmania's economy. The Marinus project will bring fibre optic cabling to enhance our digital environment and to further supercharge Tasmania's economy and provide added protection against digital disruption we are also investing $1.5 million to identify additional subsea digital cabling opportunities across Bass Strait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is an important investment in Tasmania's future to attract and develop new opportunities, including in the research and business sectors which rely on digital connectivity. And we will also deliver a whole of government strategy to address the digital divide through innovative solutions. Mr Speaker, 
together with our $5.6 billion infrastructure spend over the next four years, our industry innovation, attraction and growth plans and urban renewal projects will support the creation of over 20,000 more Tasmanian jobs in the next five years. As our population grows, we need to ensure we have the skills and the training in place to meet industry needs. What we don't want is paperwork standing in the way of jobs, which is why I wrote to the Prime Minister this month urging a fix to the skilled migration system to fast track visa processing. <laughs> First and foremost, I want Tasmanians to have the best chance of getting a job. That's why, Mr Speaker, we're transforming our skills and training systems to be modern and fit for purpose. It's why we passed legislation in 2021 to make TASTAFE for government business and we've delivered new training infrastructure right across the state. In the next 12 months, we will deliver stage one of the new TASTAFE Agricultural Training Centre of Excellence in the North West Coast. The TASTAFE Water and Energy Trade Centre of Excellence in the South and TASTAFE's first ever Cyber Security Operations Centre. Our jobs, Tas our jobs Tasmanian agenda is delivering for Tasmanian job seekers, businesses and local communities. The Regional Jobs Hub Network has supported almost 3,000 Tasmanians into work and helped over 1,200 people to connect to training opportunities to upskill them for the future. What makes the Jobs Hub model work is the personalised support they provide for individuals who are not eligible or have been let down by other service providers. People like Jason from Launceston, who faced a few personal life challenges and had been out of the workforce for some time. Jason didn't know what was next for him until he walked through the doors of the Northern Employment and Business Hub and was connected to a job at Progress Switchboards in Rochelle. Jason is thriving in his new workplace and has been given a renewed sense of purpose and confidence. Yeah. Yeah. While almost 5,000 people like Jason have sought advice and support from a jobs hub, they are also helping employers find, train and retain a workforce in a very tight labour market. Over 5,500 businesses have connected with the Jobs Hub to find the staff they need to continue to grow and meet demand. With almost 1,500 job opportunities available across the regional Jobs Hub network over the next six months, this nation-leading model is continuing to deliver for Tasmania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what we can do, Mr Speaker, especially for our young Tasmanians. Young Tasmanians deserve a smooth pathway from school into the world of work. That is why we are developing a youth jobs strategy. Over the next 12 months, Jobs Tasmania will be working closely with the Department of Education, Children and Young People and the Youth Network of Tasmania, Jobs Hubs and other service providers to examine how we can better support young people as they transition from school to work or further education and training. Yeah. Tasmania can play a crucial role in the transition to green energy while generating employment opportunities and attracting major investment to best position our state to take advantage of new opportunities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our government will produce a Tasmanian critical minerals strategy, which will help identify yeah. on island resources, drive investment and grow jobs, particularly in our regions. That's right. It's essential that we have a capable and highly skilled workforce to deliver major projects in renewable energy infrastructure, including hydrogen, mariner snake, and battery of the nation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why I am excited to announce as part of our energy jobs plan, we will upskill industry specialists, employ more vocational teachers and expand our training capacity. Yeah, yeah. This will increase our ability to meet industry's growth plans and ensure we're able to establish and grow a nation leading clean energy sector right here in Tasmania. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, a strong economy underpins jobs and means we can take better care of Tasmanians. It means more money for supports and services and gives us the funds to help relieve cost of living pressures. Our government understands the community sector is experiencing increased demand at the same time as their operational costs are going up. It's why we increased indexation on our funding to 3% last year and will further consider fair and reasonable indexation as part of this year's state budget. In addition, as I have already outlined to the community sector, 
It is our government's intention to implement an outcomes framework to ensure ongoing sustainability and stability of the sector through five-year contracts. <coughs> Mr Speaker, a strong economy enables more investment into healthcare and that's exactly what we're delivering. Under this Liberal government, Tasmania's health system has the highest level of funding and staff on record. We are spending $11.2 billion on health across the Ford estimates, more than $7.25 million on average every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Since 2014, we've employed almost 1,400 additional nurses, 390 additional doctors, 310 additional allied health professionals, and 220 additional paramedics and dispatch officers. And today I can announce again that the, the additional 97 temporary ambulance Tasmania positions deployed in response to COVID-19 will be made permanent. Yeah, Mr. Yeah, Speaker. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mr Speaker, what I want to see as Premier and Minister for Health and Mental Health and Wellbeing is Tasmanians being able to access the health care they need when they need it. And we are slashing <laughs> surgery waiting times and delivering record numbers of surgeries. More per capita than any other state, Mr Speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With our $196.4 million statewide elective, sur elective surgery plan. And today I'm announcing, announcing that we will allocate four-year funding to significantly increase state funding for endoscopy procedures across Tasmania. Yeah, yeah. Because we know that early access to these diagnostic procedures is important for detecting certain cancers and other diseases. Yeah. In the upcoming budget, our government will commit an additional $38 million over four years to fund an additional 22,000 endoscopies and purchase new equipment for the Launceston General and Royal Hobart Hospitals. Mr Speaker, and there is no doubt that the difficulties getting into a GP and the decreasing rate of bulk billing is having a real impact on Tasmanians. Many more Tasmanians end up at the emergency department. Mr Speaker, more than 40% of emergency department presentations statewide are now those less urgent cases. I want to be very clear, Medicare is a federal government responsibility and only through strengthening Medicare will we see access to GPs improve. But our government, notwithstanding that, is being proactive, investing more into innovative primary care initiatives to improve access to health care for Tasmanians. And last month we announced a partnership with the federal government for a $13 million jointly funded pilot to trial a single employer model for GPs mm. and rural generalists Very in good. training. Very good. This is about getting more GPs into communities where they are needed, improving retention and helping more Tasmanians get the care that they need and they deserve. It complements the work we are doing to strengthen Tasmania's rural medical workforce of the future through our rural medical workforce centre based at Mersey Community Hospital. We are also providing millions of dollars in funding to GPs and pharmacies to provide more after hours care in local communities around the state. <laughs> Mr Speaker, to further support Tasmanians to get the care they need when they need it, from Monday the 6th of March, Tasmanian pharmacists will be able to supply a month of medicines after a patient's prescription runs out when a GP is unavailable. Yeah, 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 yeah. This regulation change will apply to hundreds of medicines from right. the oral contraceptive pill to asthma puffers. And we're also taking action to get more allied health professionals into Tasmanian regions with what we will be the most generous scholarship program in the nation. We will, target final t year, we will target final year students in 10 allied health professions where we have a workforce shortage with $25,000 incentive should they choose Tasmania as their place to work from 2024 and commit to working in the Tasmania Health Service for at least three years. Mr Speaker, a subject close to my heart. Improving access to mental health services and supports for Tasmanians wherever they live is an absolute priority for this government yeah, yeah, yeah. as we continue to implement significant reforms. 
Next month, we'll see the opening of the redeveloped Peacock Centre, providing four new services and 12 beds for recovery-focused, compassionate, community-based mental health care. Yeah, yeah. Importantly, these new services have been co-designed in partnership with people who have lived experience of mental health. And I'm pleased to see innovative mental health services expand further across the state this year, including mental health hospital and the home. Our mental health emergency co-response co initiative, PACER, has had great success assisting 1,690 Tasmanians in its first year of, of operation, with 75% of these people supported to remain in the community. And I look forward to piloting a similar model this year, tailored to the needs of the northwest coast of Tasmania. Yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, the foundation of a strong economy and a caring community is education. Yeah, yeah, it is yeah. the most powerful driver for improving economic and social outcomes in Tasmania, including health, life expectancy, happiness and productivity. Our 2014 election commitment to extend all high schools to year 11 and 12 has now been implemented. Yeah. Despite vocal opposition, mm. That's right. vocal opposition <laughs> no. from Labor and the Greens. Our students, Mr Speaker, no longer face the agonising decision of leaving their local community or leaving the education system. We have a proven track record of delivering ambitious transformations to education in Tasmania, but we know that there is more to be done. State funding for government, schools, schools and training is now at a record $8.5 billion, and we are investing the largest state investment in, educa in education infrastructure for decades, including exciting new builds in Lagana and Brighton and the North West Support School. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are major developments, redevelopments at the Sorrell School, Hobart City High School, Cambridge Primary School, Lauderdale Primary School, Exeter High School, Montello Primary School yeah, yeah, yeah. and Cosgrove High. Yeah, yeah. And we are constructing six new child and family learning centres across the state. Yeah. Imp Mr Speaker, improving access to early education, regardless of where you live, all family circumstance has long been a priority of mine. And we know that early learning gives children the best possible start in life. Mm -hmm. And that's why last year I announced our aspiration to provide access to early learning in the year before kindergarten to every three-year-old. And during March and April this year, we are embarking on an extensive information, engagement and co-design process for our expansion of early learning as we work towards that goal. In the second half of 2023, we will be announcing pilot sites to test approaches to expanding access to early learning in a range of different settings, co-designed with early childhood and education and care sector, and informed by the needs of local communities. Here, here. This announcement complements our targeted expansion of our nation-leading Working Together program already being delivered across Tasmania. Mr Speaker, Every child in Tasmania has a fundamental right to learn to read, to write and to spell. And learning these skills is critical to future success in learning and life and should be guaranteed in every school and in every classroom. And today, the Government's Literacy Advisory Panel is releasing its final consultation paper, which will inform a framework to improve literacy from the early years to adulthood. And the paper highlights what is working, backed up by a body of research. When it comes to schooling, the evidence is very clear about the benefits of a whole system approach and a whole of school implementation of synthetic phonics, which is learning to read by breaking up words into sounds. This, combined with the explicit and structured teaching of all other essential components of reading, including oral language, phonological awareness, fluency, vocabulary and comprehension is what the evidence tells us will make a positive difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we need to ensure all teachers have the skills and resources needed for this work. Our goal, Mr Speaker, is that all schools with primary age children can demonstrate that they are implementing the elements of evidence-based structured literacy as advised by the panel by 2026. Mm -hmm. And we will work with other education sectors and national research bodies to achieve this. 
Progress towards this goal will be monitored independently and reported publicly. This will include all schools being required to adopt the National Phonics Check in Year One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, a strong economy allows us to invest in more housing and that's exactly what we are doing. Yeah, yeah. We've made this a priority focus by establishing Homes Tasmania, again opposed by those opposite. And we've committed a record $1.5 billion to deliver 10,000 social and affordable homes by 2032. We are committed to building 1,500 homes by June this year, with 745 homes delivered to date. But with our positive population growth trend and the need for more social and affordable housing, we need to deliver even faster. This is a matter of state significance. We want to prioritise housing developments to build more homes faster, particularly for those most in need. It's why we created Homes Tasmania. We're getting things done. Our planning reform agenda is progressing. We are also undertaking a comprehensive re review of local government and will act on its recommendations. Despite all we have achieved, we recognise that there's still more that we can do to deliver more homes faster. And we have t asked Homes Tasmania to identify and address delivery change challenges together with the sector and local government and advise on solutions by the 30th of April this year. Yeah. If legislative changes are required, we will take action to bring this to Parliament. We know that rental stress is another major issue for many Tasmanians, and we will continue to advocate for the, to the Commonwealth Government to ensure it provides appropriate levels of rent assistance for those who need it most. While also yeah. investigating how yeah. we can, at yeah, a state level, improve state. rental affordability. Funding will be set aside in the upcoming budget to deliver practical solutions that will make a difference, just like our successful private rental incentive program. <clears throat> We've taken significant steps to help more Tasmanians into home ownership. We'll extend the popular My Home program, which provides Tasmanians the opportunity to buy their own home with a deposit as low as 2%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Combined with other supports, such as our First Home Owners Grant, this program has already seen 107 Tasmanians purchase their own home since July 2022. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, increasing the supply of affordable housing is achieved when state government, local government and key industry sectors work together. Yeah. Build Up Tassie is a program run by Centre Care and St Joseph Affordable Homes, which helps vulnerable young people into work while building affordable homes. We will be asking the federal government to match our commitment of $4 million over six years to help more Tasmanians into jobs and more Tasmanians into homes. We are also actively working with the Commonwealth government to identify federal land such as Dowsing Point, yeah. which we believe would be ideal to repurpose mm -hmm. for housing. That's right. When it comes to private developers looking to invest in housing, we are incentivising them to act. We are extending our Headworks Holidays program to provide relief from TAS Network's water and sewage charges and support developers to bring more affordable housing online. Mm. We know that navigating the approvals pathway also for developments can be challenging. As part of our commitment to have customer-focused government departments, we will be implementing a one-stop concierge service to support developers through this process. Yeah, yeah. This government continues to develop, of course, on our planning reform commitments and the delivery of a statewide Tasmanian planning scheme. We now have 19 councils participating in the scheme, which is making our development assessment requirements and processes more consistent and efficient. For example, the average turnaround in 2020-21 for discretionary applications with the Burnie City Council was 28 days and permitted applications five days. Today I call on all on councils who are yet to join our statewide planning scheme to get on board so we can see the same sort of turnarounds in every town yeah. and in every region of our state. This Liberal Government, Mr Speaker, will continue to incentivise property owners to bring vacant housing into the rental market and look at innovative ways to encourage this. 
We will also continue to work with the Commonwealth Government to ensure Tasmania gets its fair share of funding and collaborate with local government on programs, partnerships and land supply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, a strong economy allows us to invest in community safety and we are getting things done. Yeah. We have more police on the beat. We've improved working conditions and support staff levels. We've invested in new and improved police stations and we're injecting funds into Tasmania's special operations group. We're taking care of those who watch out for us and we've implemented a comprehensive health and wellbeing program for our emergency services. Mr Speaker, we know that bushfires are devastating and we need to be as prepared as possible. That's why we've invested in our State Operations Centre and Emergency Services Hubs. The State Fire Service Act Review recommended outcomes and we're implementing those changes, including the recent improvements to governance structures for a more coordinated approach. We've committed $567 million to the Tasmanian Government Radio Network Program to ensure connectivity during emergency events and significant flood resilience initiatives, as well as mitigation planning for any future natural disasters. Yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, there can be no bigger priority than keeping our children safe. We all heard the horrifying accounts from victim survivors during the Commission of Inquiring Hearings last year and we are not waiting to respond. There are dozens of actions we have announced that are progressing and publicly reporting on, including establishing a child and youth safe organisations framework and reportable conduct scheme. Mm -hmm. I am committed, as indeed every member of our government, to keeping faith with victim survivors and ensuring the mistakes of the past are never, ever repeated. We're also committed to ensuring that we address family violence and sexual violence in our communities. Knowledge is power, and that is why our government is considering the efficacy of a family violence disclosure scheme for Tasmanians, which is essentially a right to ask. This will be informed by the national review into such schemes currently underway. Mr. Government, Mr. Speaker, the government is continuing to work hard to lower the rate of reoffending. This is a challenging issue, requiring a substantial commitment to address intergenerational issues that impact the rate of recidivism in our community. And intervention programs are critical to reducing reoffending rates and ensuring our community is safe for all Tasmanians. It's why we are increasing services that support offenders to rehabilitate and successively re integrate into the community. And this year, we will commit to ongoing permanent funding for five therapeutic staff to provide increased drug and alcohol intervention and therapeutic support in Tasmania's correctional facilities. Yeah. We are also increasing funding to appoint additional program facilitators to boost the delivery of the high intensity family violence offender intervention program and violence prevention programs across the Tasmanian prison service and we remain committed to increasing rehabilitation programs across our facilities. Yeah. Mr Speaker, we are progressing our plan to close the Ashley Youth Detention Centre and transition to contemporary therapeutic facilities and models of care by the end of 2024. Mr Speaker, a strong economy allows us to protect and promote what makes Tasmania special, to ensure that we can effectively plan for growth and provide the essential services, supports and infrastructure that Tasmanians need, we must better understand growth projections in every region of our state. And that's why, why we will be turbocharging targeted regional demography work, including appointing a state demographer to ensure we effectively plan for the needs of the Tasmanian population over the long term. So every region in Tasmania can benefit. Our first strategic regional partnership pilot will be established with the West Coast by the end of this year, with further partnerships to be identified soon. These partnerships will establish a 20-year framework for planning and land use within the area. Mr Speaker, when it comes to our cities as major gateways of innovation and commerce, as globally unique places to live and to work and visit, we must ensure that they, that they have the facilities and infrastructure that they need. That's why we are pursuing the Macquarie Point Urban Renewal Project, that which will unlock opportunities as the gateway to Antarctica, 
an international conference and convention destination, and a hub of sporting and cultural events. It will unlock transport corridors and open up housing and development opportunities. That's right. It will deliver $2.2 billion in economic activity over 25 years, support thousands of jobs and create new industry opportunities in the sporting, tourism, hospitality, events and creative industries that Tasmania has never had a share of. But we will not compromise on the very things uh, that make uh, Hobart special. We are committed to delivering a modern and connected public transport system that utilises our river, our roads and bridges to provide commuters, commuters with an attractive alternative to the private car transport. That's why we are working with the Commonwealth Government and Greater Hobart Councils to fund and to build multiple new ferry terminals and routes, a new integrated rapid bus network and new and enhanced active transport corridors. There will also be unprecedented investment in active transport corridors providing more direct and safe links from Hobart suburbs to the city for walking, scootering and cycling, including upgrades to the Tasman Bridge. Mr Speaker, the stadium at Macquarie Point will propel Tasmania onto the national and international conference and convention stage. It will give us the ability to attract events on a scale never seen before, both in the south and in the north of the state. To enable this, we must be prepared to meet existing and future demands and attract conference and business events. There is a clear industry expectation for destinations to have quality, fit for purpose, modern facilities to cater for large scale state, national and international events. Mr Speaker, if the Labor Party in Tasmania had their way, Tasmanians would be left off the map. That's right. The billions of dollars of economic investment, the jobs and opportunities, they have made their position clear. They'd rather see that investment and those jobs go to other states yeah. and another state. Yeah. While Launceston and the northern region is well catered for by our existing commercial operators, there is a need to strategically plan for the future growth in this sector. We will work with stakeholders to undertake a demand and feasibility study for new convention facilities in Launceston, and this will help inform private sector investment and complement the Utah Stadium and Inveresk Precinct. It will enable the North to have a full book of events, bringing further economic, cultural and creative activity and opportunity to the city. In the North West, we are bolstering Burning as the export gateway to Tasmania through the our $64 million bulk minerals export facility and we're investing new infrastructure at the port of Devonport to cater for a projected 40% increase mm -hmm. in freight and an extra 160,000 customers on the new Spirits yeah, of Tasmania. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, these significant projects help, make Tasma help take Tasmania to the world and bring the world to Tasmania while underpinning small businesses and industry right across our wonderful state. Mr Speaker, more people than ever will want to visit the wonderful West Coast. Not only has it been the centrepiece for the regional screen production of Bay of Fires, which our government supported, but we're investing in our West Coast tourism with $40 million for the iconic walk at the Tyndall Ranges. It's investment like these in our regional areas that create jobs, support business and build stronger communities. Yeah. Tourism and hospitality are major drivers of our economy and of course important for our culture and lifestyle. What we love about this place, visitors love too. Mm. Our strategy for tourism is based on yield and cementing ourselves as a premium destination with unique experiences. That plan is working. Our tourism yield has never been stronger at record levels of $3.49 billion for the year ending December 2022. It is vital that our future is managed strategically without compromising our brand position, proposition or negatively impacting our protected areas and our natural environment. This government takes its responsibilities for managing Tasmania's extensive reserve estates seriously and is committed to delivering job-creating tourism projects while <coughs> upholding natural and cultural values. We remain firmly committed to our tourism EOI process, which encourages visitor experiences, 
in our nat natural areas by inviting proposals that deliver economic opportunities as well as visitor experiences that are the envy of the world, Mr Speaker. Yeah. This process has produced ventures that we are all proud of. From the Modena Park Bike Park to Fresnay Lodge <laughs> on the magnificent east coast. Blue Derby pod rides in the northeast. <laughs> you trashed that too. Last year, we took important steps to enhance the process by addressing concerns about land banking and setting timeframes for key milestones. We have also updated the EOI guidelines, improved information for pro proponents, and made more information on proposals publicly available. Here, here. Projects that have been approved to proceed via the EOI process will provide investment of over $74 million yep. and 254 jobs when fully realised. Right. Mr Speaker, as a state, we have a nation-leading Climate Change Act and 2030 net-zero emissions target, which is globally ambitious, uh, yet we have the plan to achieve it. We are committed to sustainability. And we need to make sure we deliver the, the actions in our sensitive areas that align to this and globally what people expect of us. We do nature tourism well and can continue to do that. There is no doubt that cableways continue to be installed in iconic locations around the globe where sensitive environmental conditions exist. Switzerland, for example, is consistently ranked as one of the greenest and most environmentally sustainable places and has the highest concentration of point of interest cableways. We must move in this direction. It's why I'm committed not only to the Cradle Valley Cableway, but also a cableway on Kunani, Mount Wellington, and I've sought advice on developing a pathway to support this to happen. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. Mr See Speaker, you at the blockade. Mr Order. Speaker, this island has seen has been home. Mr. Speaker, <laughs> this island <laughs> has been home <laughs> to Aboriginal people for over 40,000 years. They don't want a cable car. Community. As a government, we are working hard to ensure that we are listening All Robins island. and learning from Tasmanian Aboriginal people, and we are committed to a pathway of treaty and truth-telling. The Aboriginal Advisory Group had its first meeting earlier this year and is being supported to undertake whatever work it feels is needed to determine how we should approach this important conversation, including investigating work underway in other jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. Undertaking research, seeking specialist advice, and most importantly, consulting with Aboriginal people right across our wonderful state. Later this year, Australians will have their say in a referendum on whether to update the Constitution to include an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice to Parliament. Just last month, I was pleased to co-sign a statement of intent alongside all other First Ministers that committed to the, all governments to working collaboratively to support a constitutionally enshrined voice to Parliament and ensure the integrity of the referendum process. Yeah. Alongside this important work, a priority for the Tasmanian Government in the year ahead will be to deliver better outcomes for Tasmanian Aboriginal people and their families. Introducing new, stronger Tasmanian Aboriginal cultural heritage legislation to Parliament. Legislating amendments to the Aboriginal Lands Act 1995 to facilitate the return of more land. And working with the Tasmanian Aboriginal Community Control Organisations to build their capacity to deliver services in and for their own communities. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, a stronger economy allows us to invest in a more connected, active and inclusive communities. Right. We want more Tasmanians participating in, a, in, a, in sport at a community level and what we want the supports, and we want the supports, the facilities, and the pathways from grassroots to national levels. We have seen from the jack jumpers that when we invest in the team and in the facilities and infrastructure they need, the team has success and Tasmania has success. That's why we are the strongest supporters of a Tasmanian AFL team, the infrastructure to support the team across the state, and we are so close. Mr Speaker, I am committed to ensure more Tasmanians, regardless of their age, circumstance or background, get active and have somewhere to play. Yep. Recognising this, sport and recreation within the Department of State Growth will become active Tasmania. 
which will be immediately charged, which will immediately be charged with conducting a whole of state facilities audit to determine what new or upgraded community sporting facilities are needed to keep up with the demand. And an active 2030 strategy that will be developed to ensure that no Tasmanian misses out on the social and the physical benefits of getting active, playing sports, and participating in recreation activities. Will they still activities. be the healthiest by 2025? To assist this process, we are developing a package of initiatives, including committing $10 million over two years for a Tasmanian Active Infrastructure Grants Program to fund community sport facility upgrades across the state, yeah. and $2 million for immediate upgrades at the Moona and Clarence Sports Centres. We will ensure that the, tas that the opportunities brought about by the Northern Suburbs Community Hub development in Mowbray in Northern Tasmania are fully realised yeah. to ensure the community activities and sports have a new home they'll be proud of in the north of the state. And we will contri also contribute $2.5 million to enable works to begin straight away at the Georgetown Aquatics Health and Wellbeing Centre, which will pro provide improved wellness and help outcomes for that community. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, Tasmanians elected a majority Liberal government to transform Tasmania, yeah. to put up an open, open for business sign, create jobs, economic security, and budget certainty. We are getting on with the job, and on all fronts, we have delivered. But we need continuous improvement or we will get left behind. The Tasmanian Liberal Government will continue to do everything we can to create a positive investment <coughs> environment. We'll continue to create a Tasmania that has the confidence and trust to invest in our, long, in, in our state for the long term. We have, and we will continue, to make the hard decisions. Now is, not, now is the time, now is the time to keep our foot on the accelerator, to increase momentum and to raise our sights even higher. Mr Speaker, let me be clear, I will always stand up for everyday Tasmanians. Together we will build a Tasmania, a better Tasmania through innovation and through hard work. We will build a stronger economy that gives us the means to deliver the infrastructure and services Tasmanians need and deserve. Yeah, yeah. We will get things done, yep. facing the challenges ahead in housing, health, cost of living and economic growth. Yeah, yeah. We will never shirk a challenge or miss an opportunity to make Tasmania the best place on earth to live, to work, to visit and to raise a family. Yeah, yeah, yeah.